All right, very good. Welcome, guys, to the final review for Anatomy 1 at Daytona State College. The final is going to be from muscles all the way through nerves, spinal cord, uh, cranial nerves, ears, eyes, special senses, and reflexes. All right? With that, throw in brain, and we're good. So when we talk about the muscles, I don't think he's going to go over too much detail about the sarcomere regarding the Z-line to Z-line, the thin actin and the thick myosin, but he may regarding muscle contraction. Because if we recall talking about the neuromuscular junction where the nerves hit the muscle, what is that space between where the nerves hit the muscle called? The synaptic cleft. So know what happens on the nerve end. What chemicals do they release? Acetylcholine, which goes into the synaptic cleft, which causes sodium ions to become more permeable to rush in, which causes depolarization. That causes a negative current across the cell, which opens those calcium voltage channels, which allows calcium to escape from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And now we have troponin and the tropomyosin binding site moving out of the way, so actin and myosin can cause the muscle filaments to shorten for contraction of the muscle. Once the voltage returns back to normal from the sodium potassium pump, the voltage cha channel closes and the calcium pump pulls calcium back in to that sarcoplasmic reticulum. Besides the muscle physiology on that, there may be some brief questions regarding flexion, extension, circumduction, external rotation, internal rotation, adduction, abduction, but I doubt it, but there may be four questions on general muscle movements, okay? With that said, let's go over the muscles of the body. When we talk about the face, we have around the eye, orbicularis oculi, around the mouth, orbicularis oris. We have our epicranial muscles, frontalis, occipitalis, and temporalis. Temporalis, along with masseter and your lateral and medial pterygoids, control the muscles of mastication for chewing, which is cranial nerve number five, the trigeminal nerve. Okay? With that, we move to the face. We have our sternocleidomastoideus muscle. We also have platysma across here. We have our pectoralis major. Underneath that, pectoralis minor. And our shoulder being deltoid or deltoideus. From there, he's always asked questions regarding the abdomen, whether it's rectus abdominis going straight up and down, our external obliques, internal obliques, and transverse obliques. I guarantee you that it's going to be four questions on the practical just on the muscles of the abdomen. They always have the muscles of the quadriceps and the thigh on there. This would be rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and then underneath we would have vastus intermedius between lateralis and medialis. Going across from your ASIS to your tibia, we have, what is this muscle here called? Sartorius. Sartorius, our inner adductor called? Gracilis. And if we go lateral for lateral flexion, we have tensor fascia lata inside our iliotibial tract, also called the iliotibial band. If we look at the posterior thigh, above gluteus medius, gluteus maximus, we have our hamstrings. Lateral hamstrings is going to be biceps femoris. And then medial, we're going to have semitendinosus. And on each side of that, deep, semimembranosus. What were the two muscles of the calf muscles? Gastrocnemius and soleus, which both insert into the calcaneal tendon, and the origins are going to be both the lateral medial condyles of femur. There are seven questions on origin insertion. If you know you're going to get a real high score, study the origin insertions. Elsewise, don't worry about it. If we look at the tibia here, between tibia and soleus, we see a muscle going behind, going to the toes, pulling the toes down. This is flexion. This is flexor digitorum longus. If we go back to our shin, our tibia, and go lateral, this is tibialis anterior. And if we go lateral to that, going to the toes, pulling the toes back into extension, this is extensor digitorum longus. Okay? That's all there is for this lower extremity he wants you to know. For the upper extremity, again, this would be a right arm. This would be our deltoid muscle. And if we pull it this way, this would be biceps brachii. Underneath that, brachialis. And underneath that, in the posterior, we have triceps or triceps brachii. 
I told you guys that I like this muscle here, going from the brachial, the humerus, to the radius called brachioradialis, because if we go anterior to that, going lateral to medial, we have flexor carpi radialis, and if we go next to that, we have palmaris longus, which was not on your list, but deep to palmaris longus on the right and left, we have flexor digitorum superficialis, right here and here, deep to palmaris longus. If we go back to biceps femor, um, biceps femoris over here, sorry, if we go back to brachioradialis over here, we have extensor carpi radialis and extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis. This one right here, going to the fingers, is extensor digitorum. The extensors are on the posterior side, your flexors are on the anterior side. And that is the models of the hand. They always have these on there. Okay? Elsewise, we talk about the back. There's going to be questions about trapezius. There's going to be questions about latissimus dorsi, your gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. And that's it as far as muscles go. There's about 30 questions on the muscles. If you know those, we only have two models, and everything else is going to be on pictures. Okay? From there, we're going over the nerve. Know your multipolar neurons uh, model, being dendrites leading to a cell body. We know we're at the cell body because we have a nucleus. Leading away from the cell body, we have our axon hillock and then our axon. This is a myelinated nerve, meaning the myelin or insulation around this is made up of Schwann cells if we're in the peripheral nervous system, and it's made up of oligodendrocytes if we're in the central nervous system. The gaps between the myelin are called the nodes of Rondier, and where it actually hits the muscles, these are the axon terminals or your synaptic terminals, which is where you have your synaptic cleft. That is your motor unit or your neuromuscular junction. Again, we're talking going multipolar, so this is pretty much um, motor efferent. Our unipolar nerves, for the primarily for sensory, is going to be unipolar, and our bipolar nerves are more so associated with our special senses like smell and, and vision, or bipolar neurons. With regards to the nerve, like the muscles, the individual nerves and muscle fibers are surrounded by fascia. So if we're talking about the muscles, the individual muscle fibers, the myofibrils, are going to be surrounded by tissue or fascia called the endomyceum. A group of muscle fibers called a fascicle is surrounded by perimyceum. And a muscle is made up of multiple fascicles surrounded on the outside by epimyceum. This would be the same exact arrangement for the nerves, except we would call it epineurium around the axons, perineurium around the fascicles of the nerves, and epineurium around the outside of the nerve as a whole. If we're talking about axons inside the central nervous system, where do they rely in, reside in? Axons in the CNS. Those were tracks. What are axons in the central, the peripheral nervous system called? Nerves. Those are called nerves. Okay. If we have a group of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system, what do we call those? Ganglion. So where are your sensory afferent neurons found? Dorsal root ganglion. Dorsal root ganglion. Group of uh, cell bodies in the central nervous system we're going to call nuclei. Your voluntary motor efferent cell bodies are going to be found in your spinal cord in your anterior horn. So this would be the anterior horn for motor voluntary efferent. This would be the lateral horn. This would be your ventral root. This would be your dorsal root, and here would be the dorsal root ganglion where your cell bodies of sensory afferent neurons are found, and coming together, the dorsal and ventral root form a nerve. Again, this would be the gray matter, this would be the white matter, and the white matter is where we have the tracks or our myelinated neurons going up and down through the cord. So know the butterfly, know the H pattern uh, of your gray matter. This is the opposite of your brain, which has gray matter on the outside and white matter on the inside. All right? So what else can we talk about with nerves? Anything else we talk about with nerves? 
The spinal cord itself is going to go from the foramen magnum going through the occiput all the way down to about the level of T12L1. And from there, it ends at the conus medullaris and the individual nerve travels down as what? The horse's tail or the cauda equina. It's going to end at three minutes. It's going to end at the phylum terminale, and that's basically at that point T matter. Your meninges surround your central nervous system. The central nervous system is composed of the brain and spinal cord. The outside covering is called the dura mater. The inside layer is the arachnoid layer or arachnoid mater. And on the inside, on the brain and spinal cord, we have the pia mater. Think of that as visceral. Between the subdural and subarachnoid space, we have cerebral spinal fluid, which we'll also talk about in part two regarding the brain within the ventricles, the lateral ventricles, the third ventricle, and the fourth ventricle, and through the cerebral aqueduct. We also have that same cerebral spinal fluid going through the spinal cord, going through the central canal. The central canal is going to be the opening or the hole in the middle of our gray matter. Okay? From there, we can talk about nerves having plexes or groups. The cervical plexus is the phrenic nerve from C3, 4, and 5. The brachial plexus is from C4, sometimes mainly C5 through T1. And that forms the major nerves of the radial nerve, the ulnar nerve, and the median nerve. He wants you to know the lumbar plexus from L1 through L4, giving rise to the femoral nerve. And I want you to know the sacral plexus from S4 to from L4 to S4, giving rise to the sciatic nerve, also called the common peroneal or the tibial nerve. All right? Very good. In a moment on section two or part two, we're going to go over the brain, eyes, and ears.